Welcome to lesson three of three in this tutorial, covering the national grid. This is our final video in our series of three lessons on the topic of energy transfers. Here are the learning objectives for this lesson. The first is to look at transporting electrical energy. We will then look at efficient energy transfers and finally cover the mechanism of transformers. Here are the AQA specification points we'll be covering in this tutorial. Feel free to pause the video now and have a read through them before we begin. We'll start by looking at how the national grid works and how electrical power is transferred. Electricity is produced in power stations, but it is used in other buildings, such as homes, offices and supermarkets. In other words, we have to transport this electrical power from the power stations to the consumers. The national grid does this by using a system of cables and transformers. You need to know about the national grid's role for AQA exams. It's a common topic for exam questions. Now let's move on to our next specification point, why the national grid system is an efficient way to transfer energy. When transporting so much electricity across the country, there is a huge risk of energy waste because the power is so high. Therefore, the national grid needs to keep electrical energy transfers as efficient as possible. To do this, the national grid makes use of transformers as we've just seen. Now let's look at step-up transformers. Transformers change the voltage of a circuit. They use electromagnetic induction to do this. They will either increase it using step-up transformers or decrease it using step-down transformers. The national grid has very high powers meaning very high currents and voltages. During transports, we will boost the voltage very high, which makes the current very low, but maintains the same power. We've just seen that there are two types of transformers, step-up transformers and step-down transformers. Let's look at the transfer from a power station. From the diagram, you can see that there is a step-up transformer as the electricity leaves the power station. This will increase the voltage for safe use. Next, we can see it arriving. Then, a step-down transformer will be used once the electricity reaches our homes. This makes the voltage safe for use again. From the diagram, you can see that there is a step-up transformer as the electricity leaves the power station and then a step-down one once the electricity reaches our homes. These transformers allow for an efficient energy transfer. You should be able to recognise this diagram in relation to the national grid as you may be asked to label the transformers. Later in this section magnetism, we will learn that a changing electric current can induce a magnetic field, and vice versa. This principle is called electromagnetic induction. Transformers use electromagnetic induction to change the voltage of a circuit, either increase it with step-up transformers or decrease it using step-down transformers. The diagrams show two transformers. Coils of wire are wrapped around an iron core linking these two coils. If an alternating current passes through the coil of wire, a changing magnetic field will be produced. If you place a second coil of wire nearby, the changing magnetic field will induce a new alternating current in this second coil. The size of the induced voltage depends on the number of turns on each coil. If there are more turns on the secondary coil, then the voltage will rise. In a step-down transformer, the number of turns on the primary coil 
will be greater and the voltage will fall. We've now covered all the specification points for this tutorial. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch any of the sections you're unsure about. We've now completed Lesson 3.